Okay, this video is going to be all about repinning a lock. Not so much a lock that you need to change the key, although that is possible when you've stripped a lock and you're repinning it, but specifically adding new driver pins. In this case, we're going to be adding most, uh, most effectively an anti-bump pin, which is not something you can see from too many vendors off the rack. There's somebody who had written to me. She was curious about adding some bump protection to her locks. And hopefully this will illustrate that the process is pretty straightforward as long as you have the right tools and those tools aren't all that complex. Having yourself a nice set of tweezers can help. Pinning tweezers are curved at the tip so you can hold your pins. I didn't use them for years until uh, Clay from Lockmasters said, what are you doing that without a half diamond here? Take a set of these, please. It's also nice to be able to pop the you know tail ring off the tail assembly. You can either do that with a multi-tool or most of the time, I wind up just using a turning tool. So we do have the right operating key for this lock. If we didn't, well, we would have to pick the lock or something else in order to get that plug turned. But we can just, you know, turn it like this with the key. So that'll save us a little bit of time. Why do you have to turn the plug? Well, you have to free the plug so that it's able to move cleanly out of the housing. Now, I'm just going to come in from the side here with a turning tool and try to pry this tail ring open a little bit more. There we go. So you can see that's a little bit wider now. Let's just push that up some more. Now that's going to go flying if I'm not careful. A lot of times I'll even take the other side of my turning tool and just angle it in order to spring that out. There we go. So, tail ring is aside. Now, if I free the plug, right now the, the plug is free to not only turn side to side, but to move in and out. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to pull the plug straight out. Why? Well, depending on how the housing and the internals are, there's usually a lot more going on on the top dead center line of the plug. There could be additional chambers. Maybe it's a five pin lock, but it's drilled for six. There's often notching on the rear side of the tail. Basically, you don't want to have these driver pins that are currently all up in the housing. You don't want them dropping down into the plug in ways that you're not anticipating. How do you prevent that? Just turn it slightly. As long as that key is slightly turned, those chambers are aside, you can now safely push this out of the plug. Out, sorry, push the plug out of the housing. Now I say safely, but we are going to lose the driver pins in the process if we're not careful. Hence, a follower tool. Come in from behind with a follower tool. There we go, just line that up just right. And there we are. Now this follower tool is going to come in and push the plug out. And as again, I have this plug slightly turned, I want to keep these chambers facing up so I don't dump a bunch of pins out accidentally. There we are, even almost lost a pin in the process. But there is our plug completely out. You can see all of our little pins here. And we can take those pins out and put them in a pinning tray if we want, or we can just set the plug aside if we were repinning. In fact, we are going to set these aside. We're just going to do a full disassembly here so you can see what's going on. Let's take our first pin. Next pin, third chamber, fourth chamber, and this is only a five pin lock, as are many door locks. So that plug is now completely empty. And if we line these all up pretty straight, you can even see their heights correspond very nicely. This was a 41252, and you can, you can see that in the 41252. Nice different sizes. Now, of course, all the driver pins, and that's what we're really, the meat of what we're doing here is going to be replacing a driver pin. The driver pins are all way up in the plug right now. I'm sorry, in the housing right now. So, what are we going to do there? Well, if we back the follower tool out very slowly, those driver pins can release. I usually recommend simply facing it down. You hear a click. There we go. That was the frontmost chamber. So let's put our driver pin and spring. Next chamber. 
There's the next driver pin. Oops. And spring. And so on and so forth. It's very easy to let little pieces go run away from you when you're doing this if you're not careful. All right. So now we've got a nice view of the locks configuration when we first had it here. So proceeding right along, here's your first chamber, second chamber, third chamber, fourth, etc. And we're going to change some of these parts out right now. As I said, we're going to add a heavy duty anti-bump spring and that works together with this, this little job right here. That is an anti-bump driver pin. Now when I do this, you'll really feel that spring in the lock. I mean, it, it really does impact the operation of a key. Some people even say the turning of the plug. Not enough that I don't recommend it, I still do, but I strongly recommend putting an anti-bump uh, assembly towards the rear of the lock so you're not scraping a key across. Like if it's in the first chamber, you're gonna feel that drag the entire way the key's going in. It sometimes even makes the key a little harder to insert. If it's in the rear, however, like let's say we are replacing this driver pin and spring with the anti-bump driver pin and spring in the rearmost chamber, that's going to delay when the spring actually starts pushing down on the blade of the key until the key is most of the way inserted. In my experience, that's just a little bit more palatable to many users, so I kind of recommend that. And since we've taken the lock all apart, why not go ahead and add a serrated set of pins. It's a little hard to see on camera there, but we're going to use some security pins here. I think this is probably a five. Is that the same size actually or did I get too large a pin? I think I grabbed a pin that was way the wrong size. Well look at that. That is probably, I grabbed a, looks like a seven or even an eight cut pin. So we're not replacing the key pin with a serrated key pin, but what we can do is replace, here we are, and here we are. Huh, I grabbed a few of these. Look at that. Maybe I just grabbed that one as an example. So we're not going to use that job. We have a couple of, yep, these are going to be flat on both ends. So these are suitable replacements for our driver pins in a few other positions. This is, after all, a little instruction about replacing the whole stack. So let's say we'll take a driver pin here. Put that spring back before it runs away. And when you have these serrated uh, pins that are serrated not all the way through, the serrations face toward the shear line. And maybe we'll even do the frontmost pin. Let's get that one. And we'll replace that with a serrated driver pin, which is upside down. So we'll flip it around. There we go. So ignoring our little spare parts on the side here, this will now be our new lock from the front proceeding to the back. So we have some serrated drivers in there. We have that heavy anti-bump driver. Now all we need is our follower tool to assemble this lock on up. And it's a little hard to see how this is going to go, but I'm going to try to get my best lighting that I can. Essentially, we're going to work right down into the plug. And it's a process of add a pin, push it down, advance the follower. Add a pin, push it down, advance the follower and you populate all the way through the lock. A little, a little tip that I sometimes do, I like my followers with a nice notch in the front end so you can really see what's going on and you, as you drop the pins in. I don't have this notched on both sides, but sometimes I will work on the rearmost chamber of the lock with the tail end of my follower, then push it back through and build out the rest. Why? Well, imagine I want to work on the deepest chamber in there, the fifth chamber, or if this were a six pin lock, the sixth chamber. My follower tool is literally just barely hanging on, and I'm reaching way down inside that lock. That's a killer. So instead, I'll populate a little bit from the rear and then flip it back. It's really dark in there. I'm going to try to add some lighting from my phone and see if we can't get a little more visual going on when we, when we in this lockup. Yeah, that's the way to do it. As long as I don't flash you on the camera too badly like that, we should be okay. 
So as I said, I'm going to come in with the follower tool. Most of the work we do is going to be from this perspective, going through and pinning it up. But let's do the rear side, maybe even, maybe even two of the chambers from the rear, if we can manage to make that work. All right. So I'm working right now. If I'm coming in from the rear side, you're always working out towards an edge. So if I'm working on this chamber, it's going to be... Can we see that going down there? Spring went down. Let's get this driver pin. I realize I'm shadowing with my hand a little bit. Let's get this driver pin in place. It's a lot easier, of course, if your follower tool has a notch like the front of my follower tool does. There we go. Almost in. And again, if I had that notch, I could be working it straight down through the notch. I might even flip around to show you the right way to do it. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. If your follower tool is notched, obviously everything gets a lot better. And there I am. The pin is literally in a little track, and you can slide it right down and advance. And that's going to make my life infinitely easier when we try to do this super heavy spring and anti-bump combination. It's almost impossible to get this spring even into the chamber half the time. There we go. Now our little anti-bump pin right here. That's going to rest on there. And you've got to push this thing down with all it's worth. Oof! There we go. So now, of course, I have a notch in the wrong side of my follower tool. What can I do about this? Well, I'm fortunate enough to have additional bags of tools here. I do have another follower tool, one that I don't like nearly as much because it has a hollow core, but I can use this to help myself out. Oh my gosh, is this not actually going to fit in this lock? It's a little too fat to fit in this lock. I was going to pair one through to come through on the other side. But you know what I can use? Anyone else can think of what it is I can use? I can use the plug temporarily. This, we're doing a real hacky job of this. But I should be able to come in with the plug at an angle, of course, so I don't jam things into other chambers. Mm. That's enough to flip my follower tool around and come back through. There we are and I can keep working from here. So now, let's expose the next chambers we're going to work on. I have three to go. And you can even see that little pin in the, in the one behind it. It's already been done. So it's these three chambers. And what are we doing? Well, it's a spring. Get it in the deepest chamber that it needs to go in. Work that down. And now we want our driver pin. And remember, we want the serrations to face toward the shear line. So let's flip that over there. Get it down on this little track. It is very hard to see around my camera here. And there we go, and that's just pushed down. And we advance. And I'll try to get a better angle on that as I continue moving up through this lock. Next driver pin in our set is a regular spring. And some people will mix up the springs a little bit if you have different sets of springs. You know, just, just different spring pressures to make the lock behave differently would make the, the, that's if you're pinning up a lock that you want to be very frustrating to someone who's trying to pick it. But I think including a couple of these serrated drivers is going to be enough. Especially, honestly, it's not designed to be pick resistant, but that heavy anti-bump pin in the back that's going to make somebody's day miserable, trying to reach deep into the lock and push against that heavy spring. That's a nightmare. So this cheap little five-pin lock is about to become much more robust. So again, from the best view I can give you here, there's the chamber. Whoop, losing a spring. Let's get a spring drop down into that chamber. And let's get a serrated driver pin. And again, we want it serrations toward the shear line where the plug will be rotating. So it's just kind of resting right in that notch on my follower tool and I can tamp it down and advance the follower tool forward. So there we are. 
This plug has now, I'm sorry, this housing has now fully been pinned up. It's ready to accept the plug. Right now the plug is bare. It doesn't have any pins in it. We can go ahead and add those. First position. Second position. Third position. Fourth position and the fifth position. If you ever want to kind of check your work before you install anything while the plug is out, you can always just go ahead and run the key through it. Where am I lined up here? There we are. And that looks all flush and even. We're good. So this is the correct pinning. We know that everything's going to be alright there. When you're pushing in, remember, not dead up and down. You don't want those chambers facing upward. You want this turned just a little bit. And when you turn it, don't dump it out. So push as hard as you can, clean through. It should just kick the follower tool right back out the rear. Mm. Come on now, darn it. I got a little jammed up on a serration somehow. All right, let's get that driver pin back in and see what we did wrong. Some people edit their videos to be really, you know, high end and never show any mistakes. I don't know why that is. It's, it's fine to show something's not working out exactly correctly for you once. You know what it might have been? That notch in the follower tool might have been enough to let the driver pin drop down. So let's go ahead and turn the follower tool so we're not exposing that notch either. All right, turn the follower tool, turn the plug. That's a lot smoother. Straight through. And ready to lock it in there. Let's go ahead and let those drivers snap down. And there we are. We'll get our tail clip back on. If you were installing a, a tail piece or anything special at this point, obviously you'd be doing that. A very <laughs> so I actually managed to run out of size storage space on this phone. If you guys knew the this storage space, the shambles that my entire lab and everything else is in right now, I'm about to move across the country. So forgive the really hacky kind of recording setup that I've got going on here. I'm using my phone and everything instead of our nice high-end cameras. But tailpiece on, everything should work. Key can fit in, right? Can still turn and operate, and you can really feel that last oomph when you're trying to get it in and that anti-bump driver is there. So it's a normal smooth insert and then you've got a real mm. I like that pronounced kind of detent click feeling. It's, uh, it's pretty good. But definitely you know something's going on deep in that lock. If you reach in there with picks you would, you would hit it and be like oh wow something. What's going on deep in this lock? Well that's what it is. It's an anti-bump driver pin. And that's that's a quick guide to field stripping and installing new parts on, uh, you know, a basic pin tumbler lock. Where do you get those anti-bump driver pins or serrated pins like I had? Well, pin kit, you know, a pin kit from a big supplier like Lab or someone else. Kaba Ilko makes the anti-bump drivers specifically. Uh, that's a unique product to them. But I, maybe I'll tweet about this or I'll put this in the video's description where you can acquire a little baggie of those. One of these days we'll throw bags of them up on redteamtools.com if you guys want to do this to your own locks. It's not that hard and it's really fun. It's educational. It's, uh, you know, instead of just going out to the range every day with an AR, maybe you actually field strip the whole thing down and pull it apart, detail strip it, rebuild one maybe, actually modify, drop in a new trigger, drop in new parts. It's, it really makes, you know, a rifle your own when you do that. Well, the same can be said of your locks actually get in there, take them all apart and really see what's going on and you'll have a greater appreciation for them and they'll work really well for you. Caveat of course if you have a more advanced lock, we, we did a simple lock today, you're talking about something like a Medico or a multi-lock or anything with sidebars, you know there's a lot more in terms of little parts that can come flying out if you're not careful. Do I think you're up to it? Yeah, probably. Just be advised. This was, this is baby steps. It might be more than that that you have to consider in the future. Stay safe out there.